Hello, this is a showcase video featuring projects from some of the people who support me on platforms like Patreon. So just a quick ad for my Patreon, if you want to support the channel, have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some rewards, including all my videos up to a week early, a live stream with me and various other sneak peeks and pictures. And if you don't like Patreon, I also have YouTube channel memberships, so just click on that join button below. In this video, we've got lots of projects, mostly robots and also some other stuff, including clocks, and an electric car conversion concept. First up, we've got some walking machines from Adam, and these are octopods, I guess, and not hexapods, because they've got eight legs and not six, which you don't see much of, actually. Uh, this one looks like it's pretty well engineered, though, some nice shiny aluminium there. I'm not sure what the controller is, but there's mention of Teensy in some of the other videos in Adam's Vimeo channel. There is some footage of them walking around, and I particularly like the heads on some of them, so check that out. This is a 3D printed one that seems to be able to walk and rotate, and there's also some footage of the uncanny eyes that look like little OLED or LCD displays, and this robot's got four eyes, and those eyes look pretty good, and I really like the head on the first one as well. And now it's time for something totally different. It's John's PCB ruler, which measures a banana. I thought it measured one inch, but it doesn't. It measures one banana. So you can get these on Oshpark for $9.50, and you should check out John's stuff on Twitter as well. He's also got a mini version, which is available on PCBs.io for a little bit less money, about $2.79. Next up, it's another robot. It's Carl's Mechanum Rover, and this uses Mechanum wheels, which are like omnidirectional wheels, but the wheels around the circumference of the main wheels are slanted at 45 degrees, and that means if they move in a certain way, so wheels on each side turning in opposite directions, it'll actually slide directly sideways. So Carl's got a really good build video for this. There's parametric CAD that you can download for free, and there's a really good explanation of how it works and how it's controlled, as well as a really good demo with the radio controller. Carl also has a drone project, which is his DIY Amazon Air project, and this is a drone with a release mechanism that can release a package. It's controlled by Pixhawk and it's autonomous, and it seems to drop off the package pretty well. It's time for the clock project. This is Nicolay's tower clock. So basically, this is a tower clock that goes in a tower or in a building. And this project is detailed on Thingiverse, all the parts are there, it runs on an Arduino, and it also has a DCF receiver, and that means it will keep time automatically. So all of the assembly instructions are there, and all the parts can be downloaded and 3D printed yourself. And it looks like it's quite a complete set of instructions. And the aim of this is that you can cheaply make a lightweight tower clock with lightweight hands, and then you can make it yourself, and you can fill up a hole in a building, perhaps, if you happen to have one in your house. Next up is Andrew's Raspberry Pi RFID access control system, which he built for his makerspace. So this project is featured on hackster.io, and that means that all of the details are there, so you can build this project yourself. It runs on a Raspberry Pi 3, it's got some other parts in it as well, which are all detailed, and all of the instructions are here, which is really nice. So you can see all of the wiring diagrams, all of the pins of what to connect to what, including the LCD, and also the code and things that you need to install on the Raspberry Pi to make it work. And if you want to see a video of it working, you can check out Andrew's Instagram, and you can see actually working there, so let him into his makerspace. Hey L3. What? Tell me a Star Wars joke. What's Han Solo's least favourite coffee shop? Jar the Hutt. Oh, L3. What? Nothing. Yes, it's L3 from Solo, A Star Wars Story, and this is the Patchbots YouTube channel, which has lots of other great content in as well. So this is an Amazon Alexa-powered robot head, essentially. So this is running on a Raspberry Pi 3 using Amazon Alexa voice services, so you can talk to it just like Amazon Alexa. So it's a smart speaker, but with animatronics in and stuff like that. So all these parts were 3D printed, cleaned up, there's quite a lot of detail in the video about the assembly here, and how the whole thing hangs together. L3. What? Who is Darth Vader? Darth Vader is a Dark Lord of the Sith, formerly a Jedi Knight named Anakin Skywalker, and the father of Luke and Leia. 
And as I say, you should check out the rest of the channel for some other builds, including one of my favourites, which was actually an electric mountain board. I'm quite a fan of electric skateboards myself. Lots of other Star Wars stuff, including a 3D printed chopper. And now it's time for another Star Wars droid. Have you ever wanted to 3D print an entire R2-D2 that's motorised, radio controlled with the rotating dome and all the gadgets and sounds? Well now you can, because Michael Baddeley's put together a set of files he designed and there's actually quite a big community of people who are printing them and putting these droids together. You can check out the full build of the working current progress actually on his YouTube channel. But he does also have a Facebook group, which I did a live stream in a while ago, and also a forum. And you can get links to those from Michael's Patreon page, which is fairly well supported. But he could always do with more, and it's a really, really good project. So check that out. Yes, it's the project you've been waiting for. It's Neil's electric car conversion concept. So he's planning to put this as a replacement engine in an MGF and the engine's blown up. So why not? And this unit is going to basically replace the engine and allow you to drive like a normal car, but it's completely electric. So it's going to do around 100 horsepower, 0 to 7,000 RPM like a normal engine, so you get the full range of speed. But the key thing about this is that it's made of lots of small off-the-shelf electric motors. And the motors he's used in this design are radio-controlled boat motors, and that's because they're water-cooled. So we've got four units, which are basically 18 kilowatts a unit. Each of the motors has a 200 amp speed control, or a 200 amp ESC, so plenty of power, more than the motor actually needs. But basically, all these motors work together. They load share, and that allows it to have all of that power, but it's made of off-the-shelf parts. The gears in this are nylon, they're actually glass-fill nylon, so they should be almost as strong as steel but without the weight of steel, and each motor has a very clever latching mechanism that allows it to be taken out and put back into the mechanism. So you could run on perhaps only one set of motors if you're cruising at 70 miles an hour on the motorway, and if you put your foot down, you can then get all of the motors in to give you all of the power. But of course, that does mean that you can have some motors cool down with their water cooling, and you can kind of run them through um, in phases so that you can get some cool down and some are actually giving you the power, or you can use all of them at once to give you the maximum acceleration. Neil's planning to use optical encoders to keep them in sync, so to actually measure each of those gears and make sure we can drive the motors at the right speed so they don't fight each other, but I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge to do in practice. I guess if they've all got encoders it can be done, uh, perhaps using an ESC like the O-Drive it would definitely be possible, but I'm not sure about those ESCs, but that remains to be seen. But nonetheless it's a really interesting concept, and of course you could use off-the-shelf batteries as well, so one of the other ideas is to have a really big battery that you can drive somewhere with, you can charge it when you get there, and just pull out a smaller battery for short journeys. So Neil's got a website with some of his concepts on. He's also set up a Patreon, so you can have a look at that. I think he needs some more supporters, but there's a YouTube video about this whole concept, which I've cut bits from for this, but you can have a look at that whole video with the full explanation, and I'll put the link in the description to this video. So I hope you enjoyed this project roundup. I've put links in the description to this video to all of the projects so you can go and show some support over on those other channels and various pages. Thanks again to all my patrons and YouTube channel members and if you'd like to support me then check out the links in the description to this video. Alright, that's all for now.